Hello and welcome back. This is David from the Personal Finance Squad. Knowing the rules of the policy. Okay, so insurance companies vary on what they can consider when quoting a price. So, of course, that gets into protection. Those are the coverages we've been talking about. Comprehensive, collision, liability, gap insurance, things like that. Bottom line is what you're going to pay for it. So a general example is we have a driver. What has a policy? Doesn't have a ticket. So a nice clean driving record. And three months later is issued a ticket. And that could change the vehicle rating or it may change the class range as a different class of driver. Does the rate increase? Accident forgiveness, like all state I might have had it at a point, or Liberty Mutual. So when you hit your first accident. They don't make your policy increase in the rate. In the event things happen, how do I know what to do? So this is a great question. How does the claims process work? It's pretty general. They probably give you a phone number, somewhere to call. Some have apps now to take pictures of the car so they can see it right there and they can so they can get a adjuster out to, to you know expedite your policy in a nice fashion. Policies are affected by a credit scoring system. Now I'm not sure how many use them, but it's for the major companies, most of them use a credit scoring system. It's some kind of computer program that determines based on your credit score, and it's a factor that can determine how it's gonna affect your premium cost. They're not gonna tell you how that system works. They're just gonna tell you what your score was because that person on the phone's not gonna know that. But they'll give you a rating, and when you're getting quoted, you may get even a statement in the mail talking about credit policy or credit rating or running your credit, things like that. Like with my insurance company, there's a rating up to 24, and my number might be 18, for example. So why is it not 24? Things like that. It just gives you a general area of, hey, what's going on here? But it might make you think and go, listen, you know what? I have a really, really good credit rating, but that might not be the only factor. They might say, you know what? They can tell that your debt and liabilities, debt to income ratio is high, things like that. Again, you're not going to exactly know what it is. You just need to know the score of what it is, and if it throws a red flag, Maybe you're better off going to another insurance company that might give you a better rate. But again, these are things you just need to think about when you're getting your policy. Recommended bump shops. So oftentimes, insurance companies will say, hey, we have shops in the area that we do business with and they guarantee the, the coverage on your car, like the, uh, they're going to fix your fender, for example. We guarantee that coverage to make sure it's 100% accurate. So that's what this mentioned, guaranteed. Now, like my case, I have a shop that I use, so I have that option to go do that, so I don't have to use what they have. I'm not worried about my car looking the way it should, but that doesn't mean that you don't have to go with who they have. In the event of an accident and, they are, and the bump shop is doing work, who, who gets the check? So I've had it where checks get sent to me and then I pay the uh, company when they're done with the work, or the, they have the checks uh, sent directly to the bump shop, which for convenience purposes, you'd rather just have that. For car rental insurance, what is your limit and how much companies can you use? So maybe Geico or something uses Enterprise. Right? Maybe another one uses Budget. I don't know if this is necessarily a, like a big deal, but some people have their preference of what they want. So another thing is to... Is car rental applicable for when my car is in service? I'm going to say most of the time that's not the case. If you have a service problem with your car, that's not a insurance coverage. But again, you know, policies and coverages change all the time, so maybe there's something out there. But generally speaking, insurance covers a sort of a loss of some sort, but not a loss based on service of the car, the performance of the car, but rather something happening to the car that's unforeseen events by someone else, not by the by the quality of the vehicle. Car rental again is how many days. Car rental is covered on my policy. In my case, I have 30 days coverage. And they cover me for $30 a day. So car rental is an optional thing. It's, of course, another cost. But I like to have in case I've been in a car accident. Because if you don't have that, that means you're going to have to go pay for that car rental yourself. So if you can afford it, it's a really nice feature to have. But these are things you need to ask questions about how it works and what you're covered for. And, and uh, what is that uh, as a cost to my policy, my premium? Roadside assistance. It's becoming more and more common with companies where 
they either throw in like a AAA membership as part of your policy, or they just have roadside assistance built in with a certain plan level, like a mayor prize. If you're through Costco and you have the executive membership, roadside assistance on the policy is thrown in as an automatic, it's not an additional cost. Or in some cases, you just may have to pay for roadside. So it's a good thing to ask. But roadside is becoming more and more one of those things that it doesn't cost a lot. It might be thrown in as a bonus. A lot of companies are doing it in some shape or form. It'll become standard across the board, which is a benefit to you, the consumer. Here's some more. How does the process work if I'm being sued by under my liability coverage? So again, those are questions like, hey, someone's suing me. Am I at fault? How much coverage do I have? What are they suing me for? Things like that. Process for things like this definitely does not happen overnight. So these are things you may want to understand in case it happens. If I have a claim that is not my fault, it is considered as a negative mark in my rating. So I can tell you this is a tricky one. I guess it depends on the insurance company. I can tell you that my son has had a few accidents in his past and although a few of them weren't his fault, rose his insurance premium. I've had it myself where I've been in a few accidents. In fact, I don't even have a mark on my record but my insurance went up just a tick or two when they did the policy quote because they said I was involved in a couple accidents. Payment options on the policy. For example, here's another one, Meriprise. They just changed to yearly, but I think they did that for the state that I live in. In other states, they might not ask for a yearly upfront. Oftentimes, if you pay yearly with companies, they'll reduce the premium. And we talked about having payments and lump sums uh, in chapter three. Uh, they might do it for six months as well. I would say most companies offer a monthly option because figuratively speaking, policies, especially the bigger the family size, the number of cars, the policies get very expensive and people can't afford but to pay on a monthly basis. Okay, so we wanna get a little bit into how a policy is priced. And there are several factors which you can tell by just going through these questions and some of the coverages out there that it creates the determination based on options where you live. But these are some pieces in here you can really get into and understand at least figuratively speaking and realistically speaking about how to help your car out a little bit. Again, understanding something makes things a lot more palatable even if you don't like the answer. So things like this in here make sense to that notion. So age or years of driving experience. So younger drivers statistically are gonna pay more than older ones and the reason being is they get in more accidents and fractions and accidents are higher. I remember when I was driving as a kid, when I turned 19, 21, I think it was 23 and 25, and I don't know what it is today. Whatever the math is today on these, at these points, I noticed a big drop in my coverage. I had good records, but I noticed when I hit these numbers, just by general policy cost, my premium went down respectively because because of the statistics that the older I got with these in these ages that the accidents were statistically down from being a 16 year old. The make of the car, that makes a lot of sense, right? So if you're driving a, a Rolls Royce as opposed to a, let's just say a Chevy Cruze. I think this is how you spell it. Uh, it's obvious that it's gonna cost a lot more to insure this car than it is this car. It's just simply this car is worth more value than the Chevy Cruises, um, respectively speaking. So if this car, let's say, is worth 100K and this car is worth 20, and you have the same damage on the front bumper, you know it's going to cost more for this car. So that's something you have to think about, especially if you buy a car, a new car. When you buy a used car, the value conti continues to go down on it, right? So a uh, Rolls Royce that's 50 years old, maybe a lot less in value, and you can see that comparatively speaking, the rates would be lower. It's pretty pretty obvious information. But here's a fun little set of cars here for a statistic. The dates are from 2008 and 9 at the time of this writing or this video, but you can see that there's always a list of the most theft rates. You can see that a lot of four-wheel drive vehicles are on this list. Silverado. Sierra. This may be four wheel drive. This one I think is. 
So there's a there's certainly a, a repetitive pattern that escalates a big car that probably has four wheel option. So a lot of these cars are four wheel drive. I'm not sure what the correlation is. You can see that the claim thefts are just pretty high, and that's just the way it is. This is just something a little fun to play with. But what the understanding is is these are things you need to think about when I own a certain vehicle. So think about the value. Think about what you have, and if you can certainly ask, you know, what is uh, does my car tend to get broken into more? You know, or or go do some of this research yourself. Go on the internet and type this in. And if your car is on this list, this is something you may want to consider before you buy it or lease it. Income. So if insurance pays for lost wages due to an automobile accident, the premium may be higher or lower depending on the income. Then this is another factor-based thing that they put in. Here's the key, main one right here. And again, this is obvious, but driving record and previous insurance history. Some states accept applicants at regular rates if they meet specific criteria. So if you met certain criteria, you're in this little rate class and they have to do it. Again, do you really know that they are? I don't know, but you can tell by when you compare quotes from other places. But you can see traffic and drunken driving convictions and at fault accidents can change this landscape on this. What we're really saying here is the crappier your record is, the higher you're gonna pay. And you can get lists of what your infractions are, what they're nailing you for, even the ones we talked about when it's not your fault. Without say, without an obvious uh, statement here, but the better the driving record, the better the chance you're going to pay less. It's just simple math. You're not getting in accidents. You have a great driving record history. So be good with your car and obey the rules and it's going to benefit your wallet. Vehicle usage. A common question is, how many miles do I drive to work? So your rake and dependency, if I say I drive five and I multiply that out, then more and more of the question may be more of how many, they want to know how many miles do I drive each way? And then they'll ask how many miles, miles do I drive in my car per year? The thing that factor they put in and say, hey, you know, the average car is 12,000 miles a year for the average driver. These are the things that they want to do and, and what they want to try to figure out here is the wear and tear in the vehicle. It's less important than knowing the fact that you're in your car more increases the risk that you're going to get in an accident and that's just straight math. Lifestyle conditions, rates may be affected whether someone's married, single, have children, own a home, number of vehicle own, vehicles owned. So you can get discounts because you have multiple vehicles with the policy or a multi-car discount is what they call it. That's a very common one that you can bundle, which I'm sure we're going to have some dialogue down below saying the same thing again, but or a, you pair that with a homeowner's policy. Usually it's a good 10% or something like that. But these you know, have discounts for if you are a homeowner. These are, they want to put the factors in their, their computers based on everything you put in there to determine miles history, where you live. They put all these factors in, they keep coming up with these rates. So every time you put in another factor, it keeps computing and when they're done, they're going to end up saying, okay, you know what? This is the rate we're going to give. So you might not be able to hit every one of these to get the best rate. You just, the idea again is to get the discounts, get the best way you can and have a good record and determine which kind of car you want to drive. Extras. So we talked about Roadside assistance and car rental. You add them on your policy, it's going to cost more. They're not generally a lot of money, but those are more for your option and protection. So consider that. Credit scoring. This is a big one. We just talked about this a little while ago. You might get a credit factor, some kind of score. Again, you're not going to know what that is. What you will hear in the industry is that there's a correlation between one's credit score and the likelihood that they will the policyholder will file a claim. Credit report high, probably is a higher premium. And again, I, they do not typically reveal how the premium is, af, is affected. It's just a rating scale. So they do these correlation models and say, it's kind of like if someone works on mortgages for a living, if they have a history of bankruptcy, there's a likelihood more that they're not gonna let that person work there because they went bankrupt on their house that they already owned. So they think of things like that, that they just, put the statistics together and it's just mathematically says if you have a lower credit score, you tend to get into more accidents. And over the last 
10 years or so. I'm not sure really the timing, but this this is something in, in the past when I was a, a young adult or my 20s or so. I don't recall credit scoring being a factor. This is a more of a newer thing in how they determine a policy price or one factor of it. You've heard me say this several times. Place of residence, where you live has a big effect. I remember that I lived at one time in a zip code that was bordering a, a big city that didn't have the, the best crime reputation. I wasn't and bordering meaning I was still a good half mile away from it, but part of my zip code had the same number string. So for example, one, two, three, six, eight. All the zip codes in the, that major city started with a three. So since it was bordering and it looked like a zip code that was more in there, and this is what they told me, my rate was a lot higher. Then I moved 40 miles away and my insurance went down $1,000 a year just for the fact of where I was residing. So that can make a huge difference. So if you border, a, a city or an area that does, does a high crime rate, theft rate, accidents, whatever it may be, there's a good chance you're going to pay more for it or if obviously you live in one of those. So knowing a company's history is important, especially maybe you don't like the way that they've handled what they said they have. Maybe they didn't um, cover the things they said they would. Maybe you don't like the way that they um, handled their business, like a process. Other things a little deeper than that is operational financial information like you can you can go and do some research on companies out there and say you know who's are rated the best companies to work with all right so we're going to cut it short here we're going to get into our last section As you can see here's the premium and policy declaration we're going to get into a little bit more of a pricing and putting into the budget supplemental exchange and we'll go from there so thanks for joining and we will see you in the next video the